Hello and good morning. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, happy celebrating Juneteenth if you're in America and uh, and you're able to celebrate. Um, unfortunately, my my company um, uh, is uh, actually it's not my company. The place I work at uh, is not celebrating. So um, normal normal stream time for me today, and then I'll be heading off to work. Uh, so uh, today I figured we'll be going back to uh, sort of like focus on uh, on the platform on this entire like businessy type thing that I have uh, that's sort of like a requirement before I move back into um, uh, creating like tutorials proper. Uh, I think we got enough. Uh, I got enough done with the other things. I realized I was kind of procrastinating and getting this stuff done. So let's let's go ahead and do it. Um, okay, so last night I set myself up some with a, a basic Cypress test, and I think we can do this as a um, uh, sort of like a cadence of getting started with this, where we say, okay, here's like here's my web app, write the new test, then um, then just sort of like move forward and, and get that going. So let's uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, all right, so we have. Oh, basically, what I want now is to set up um, uh, to set up uh, networking. Um, yeah, basically, when I click this, I want to take us, me back to the home screen. And so right now, it checks the link here, and its uh, URL is hash and not slash, as it were. So we need to go fix that, uh, which means we need to create and set up the router. So we're going to have um, route, you're going to be home. Um, I also need to remind myself exactly what the router looks like. Oh, right, it's going to be this at thing within home next to it. Okay, that, that's what it is. So we'll have at slash, that's gonna be home. Uh, and then we're gonna need this, this switch function, which is, this seems pretty simple. Okay, so we're gonna have public function switch that takes in a route, which is a reference to a route, and we're gonna return, I believe, HTML, right? Yeah. Uh, why aren't you giving me uh, the ability to fill this up? Is it because I haven't modded you from app or from lib? Oh, that's what it is. Okay, so mod router. Now in here, I should be able to fill the match arms. I was I was wondering, it's like, why aren't you upset at me about that? Why aren't you upset about me this? Okay, so home. What do we want to do? Um, I want to um, I want to return a tag with home the home route in it which does mean um, okay so we have like components I really want to have like something like pages or views nope that's a that's a file. I want pages. Okay, then another file in here, and this is going to be 
home to their ass. Oh, I'm in logging. I don't want to be in logging. I want to be in router. Okay, that makes you happy. You're only unhappy because of that ENV. Okay, so there we go for that. That's great. And the main app. Want to bring in, okay, so we need, want to bring in Router. Okay, so we have the browser router, I believe. Yeah, we need to bring in browser router and we use this switch thing too. All right, so we have a div class container fluid. We have our top menu. I want that to display no matter what. So our switch is actually gonna come down here. Actually, no, it won't. We'll come right here and replace you. And it's this uh, capital S switch. Uh, we give it a type. Um, oh, which is the route? Uh, we have our then render equals and it's the switch render. And then we pass it in. Um, this switch, so that's what? Um, Seem to not be getting any help again. Okay, there we go. Uh, switch switch. Wait, no. I don't want uppercase switch. I want lowercase switch. Why am I in that? I don't need you. I need to be in here. 
switch. Um, okay, render, and then we self-close that, like that, no, like that. Okay, so always fails, I have let error report, was always fails, like message, so I don't actually need you or you. Okay, imported you, not using you at all, not using you. Okay, there we go. Um, Homeless, hello. Uh, the switch is adding components in the DOM. Um, no, I don't think it's adding components in the DOM. I think it's more of like handling the URL, switching in the history. So what happens from this? Uh, we see here there we go uh, make you big too uh, so we see here the only thing that really is like affecting um, we have this hello world that uh, this is loading in the route down here um, so it's it I guess like in a way it is injecting into the Dom so yeah okay never mind you're right, it is adding components to the DOM just like a React router and just like other things. And then here I have the link tag in this one. So this A tag is really the link tag with a two on it. Or I rather I want to change it to be a link tag. I think I think it's not one yet. Oh right, because I needed the router set up first to uh, then like navigate somebody someplace else. So the next step uh, to make our test pass, I want to go to our top nav bar and I want to make this a link component. So I think it's link, pass it the route, and then two and a location. Okay, so then this will be not quotes. This will be route. Um, I want route home. I want this image inside of it, so that that'll be fine. So this image goes inside of that, uh, and then we close link. We close link route. Okay, so then that makes you happy. Everybody seems happy. Uh, there we go, finally rebuilt. Looking at you, now we have this A, href uh, goes to home. Um, now I put my span, like so I put a span that sort of wraps around this with this top menu logo, which um, that's what how I'm selecting this in Cypress. Um, 
which is a little bit unfortunate. Because I don't think I can actually add anything to this link route, like tell exactly what what to do or like how to click on it. So this is one of the few times that I'm going to need to tell Cyprus, okay, find that. If you get that, you're expecting the span to have the href. I really want there to be an A tag on that. And I don't think there's any like references or anything else that I can do for that. So let's go to our tests. Oh, which are outside of this context. Hmm. Okay, I need to close this VS code. See the out one. There's Cypress. And open up code here. All right, so here's Cypress integration. Here's our top menu. All right, so visit slash get this thing. Um, unfortunately, I need to get a child component um, A. So one where it's like A should have attribute href and that attribute should equal slash. So when I run this, uh, that passes. So. Uh, we now can see that, okay, we, um, we navigate here, and this will take us back home. Um, get methods work with CSS selectors? Yes, so in Cypress, uh, anything get CSS selector. Think, uh, think old school jQuery. Basically, that's the equivalent of what it's doing behind the scenes. Okay, so um, that was actually like one of the, the top things that I have um, in here. So I'm gonna go to the homepage, we're gonna click the logo. So like set up the router, I set up the Cypress logo, Cypress test, we have this. So I want to do this. Um, I want to commit this. Uh, okay, so this is going to be um, visit uh, or can go home. I'll go ahead and publish this branch. Uh, there's some refactorings that I need to do for or refactorings, rewritings, not not sure which one uh, for a deployment since I did move a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, basically, we do have uh, Pulumi stuff that is sitting one level up. No, it's sitting inside of here. This is where we have like Pulumi telling us, okay, we're gonna head up. It's gonna do all the things. Um, I don't have like a dot GitHub that's going to uh, try to run this for us. So I think that's going to be another thing to do. Okay, so I want to um, set up deployments. Uh, I need to like reset deployments. Reset up deployments. So 
So what we set up previously before we sort of like decided to switch over to a different um, uh, GitHub architecture is a S3 bucket that hosts our, um, our files and a cloud front sort of sitting on top of that. And that, that seems to be just fine. Um, and I think that's, is that here? We have our, okay, so. Yeah, for distributed delivery, it, it makes it a little bit cheaper because if a lot of people are hitting at the same time, it gets a return from a cache as opposed to constantly hitting the bucket because you're charged for essentially each time that somebody um, pulls from your bucket. It's, it's more about data and how much data is delivered down, but it ends up being you think you can think about it that that way. So by caching that less pulls from the bucket, it costs less money. And then I can affect that cache and like make it sit there for longer uh, between times. Like during de during um, dev time, probably going to have a longer cat, a shorter cache. How much does CloudFront cost? Not very much. Um, it, it really depends upon uh, if you want to be global or if you want to be um, just sort of like set to one area. So. I'm in, I'm just a, in North America section. So what, uh, United States, Canada, Mexico. Do I actually have a link to you? No, I don't. Um, okay, so it'd be AWS. Front. Pricing. So I am on the free tier right now because I created a new account for this, um, or like for the for Brooks builds. Uh, so I'm I'm in here, and then notice it says always free. So that's that's a, like a really important thing here. There there is something that's always free each month. So they do they do want you to use something like this. Uh, so therefore they're they're encouraging you by giving that to you for free. Uh, creative uh, ether, hello. So essentially I don't pay for it at all. Uh, you know and you you especially don't pay for it just to have it. Uh, so you get it for free um, for like essentially what I'm doing right now there it's not even coming close to this uh, but there is uh, let's see on-demand pricing here it goes uh, so for North America for the first 10 terabytes of data sent out, it is 0 0.085 um, US cents um, per per month, no, per gigabyte. And then it just sort of goes down after that. So like the next 40 terabytes is gonna be at, you know, 0 0.8. And then, and then continuing to go down from there. And then you can see that it increases in price uh, depending on different regions that you're in. Uh, and that's, that's just more of like other regions cost more money for Amazon to run. And so that's, that's the big thing that we have to worry about. So I've set it up only for United States, Mexico, and Canada, uh, which is the cheapest option. Um, I suppose, oh, I think Europe and Israel I may get that and not have much of a choice. I think that comes with like zone one or whatever it's called. I think these two. I don't even know why they're separated here. A Borfrestad, hello. Uh, so for deployment,
and I kind of wanted to update my my project here to sort of like reflect what happens. Now, some of these I want them to like start moving through automatically, uh, right? So we're gonna have like I'm in progress. I'm writing it. I'm doing all the things. I, I make sure that it passes the tests, um, and then I want to um, I want to deploy this out. Um, okay, so deploy would be the next step. So let's add this as a new column. Uh, deploy. Um, for right now, I'm not really having a uh, like a dev versus a production branch, mostly for cost purposes. So uh, if I want to deploy this, I also need to now make sure, okay, I can see. ticket in here um, okay so I want to go home go to the home page when I click the logo um, deployment okay so right now I kind of sort of had this um, did I ever get this to an automated state like i've certainly done automated state stuff for my work uh i don't know if i got it for brooks builds though uh i don't see like a dot github or anything else in here um this is showing okay we have our bucket like creating a bucket here uh okay this is all fine so i believe that to deploy this all I need to do is build this for production. So that would be uh, going into web app and we're gonna do a trunk, um, trunk build release. Oh, and I actually have trunk running here. Yeah, that's Cypress. Oh, that's Docker. Oh, I have stuff running in Docker. That's 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 the other thing. Um, you can use Amazon Code Deploy to deploy your app using the pass to deploy no JS apps. Absolutely, I, I definitely could. Um, there's nothing sort of like technically stopping me. Um, I guess like the only thing is I've not really had great experiences with Amazon code deploy in the past. Uh, I just sort of like, I always go back to like just writing things into GitHub actions and usually, usually, usually using that. Okay. So you're upset. Why? Because you don't see that there is this, uh, this key. So I need, I need to tell it that this environment variable, oh, okay, right. It, so it needs to have this environment variable here in order to work properly. Oh, well, interesting. So how do I want to do this? So I needed to know the real SEQ key. I think, did we ever get SEQ deployed out? I don't know if we did. I think I'm gonna rip this out of the code until we actually know that it's working properly. Until we like have everything else. So we have this like logging here. This was all just sort of like part of an experiment. Um, I can come back and look at previous commits so I'm going to remove you. All 
Okay, so now it's just a bunch of modified stuff. No errors, no warnings. So I should be able to do build you again. Okay, so that successfully builds. I should be able to now do a um the deploy. Okay, I'm going to open up VS Code one more up. Wonder if it's okay with that or not. Uh Okay, so we don't we don't have anything to automatically do this. Um okay, so uh to deploy, uh this is going to be pretty simple. I need to just do an AWS sync. with the appropriate directory. Um, also, I'm gonna turn off this Docker so it doesn't rebuild on me. In fact, it may have already rebuilt on me. So let's rebuild this again really quickly. So we're gonna go to platform, web app. Uh, we're going to Okay, so we're good to go there. Um, that puts everything into the dist folder. So these need to be copied up into, uh, into my S3 bucket. And so there's a command to do that. Uh, it's been a little while since I have done this. So it's like AWS, um, it's like ADBS, like S3 sync or something like that. S3. Okay. So directory and S3 prefix operations. So sync is what I want to do. So sync a um, uh, the file, the folder and files with that. Okay, so in the command, AWS S3 sync, um, then a folder, and then a bucket. Source directory is foo, any include exclude files will be evaluated with the source directory prepend. So that would be sync, okay. Um, okay, so that's gonna be the special URL name. So it would be AWS S3 sync. Uh, I want to sync the folder I'm in right now. And then the bucket name. I'm gonna open this in another browser over here. Did I leave my... I left my uh, e... my fob upstairs. Yep, I need my MFA code and that is upstairs. So I will be right back with that. So hang tight.
I'm back, and look who I found. I know. Uh, hello, Walrus, Walrus. Uh, oh, but are you... Are you done? You're done. He doesn't like the, um, the the microphone too much. He thinks it's weird and uh, sticks out. He liked it more when it was just sitting in front of me, which I don't know. Like, it's easier for me in this position, but if it does mean less cats, might be an argument to go back to the other the other method. All right. Go in, there we go. All right, so I need our bucket. That's going to be an S3. I have the, okay, I call it platform prod. Um, it constantly yells at me. It's like, it's publicly accessible. Of course it is. Of course it is. Okay, uh, and then I think... No, that's, that's, not, that's not what I want. Uh, where's the URL thing where it's like the S3 colon slash slash. That's what I want. That's what I need to do. Um, I have the, like the platform prod. Oh, properties. This might be it. Okay, so if I copy you, we're gonna sync you to there. Invalid argument type. ABS S3 sync local path S3 URI or S3 URI local path? Yeah, I wanna sync from Okay, so you do not like dot maybe? Okay, hold on. Um, Syncs directories and S3. Okay, so local path, I want all that stuff. I must be missing something. I'm gonna go to their examples. Okay, AWS S3 sync to dot S3. Oh, that's not it then. My bucket head, okay. Oh, this is the name of the bucket. S3 colon slash slash. Okay. All right, so I see a single index HTML now. Okay, so that's great. Now, if I go to, what do I have in it? Is it? Hey. 
Hey, there we go. Okay, so now um, looking at this deployed out, rooksbuilds.com, uh, which is an HTTPS because we've also set up a, um, a ACM certificate uh, to here. So here we go. I've uh, I got this set up now. Now, if um, I think a lot of this should end up continuing to work because we get some random random uh, file names, which is gonna auto bust the cache for me. So I can set this to be a significantly higher cache probably, like maybe even like just a maximum cache of like a week or two weeks. And I think it'll still work just fine. But here we go, everything's fine, no console errors, um, and then you send me home. So there we go, we have you deployed. Now this isn't automatically deployed. Uh, and then I guess like um, I deployed, I do my smoke test, everything seems to be working fine. That's great. Uh, so then it, you're, um, you are essentially done at this point. So what is, uh, what is the very next thing that I want to do? So um, looking at this, oh yeah, I, turned off okay, there we go can turn dark mode back on again. Okay, so what do I want to do with this? I want to, like, what, what, would, what would be the very next thing to work on for, for this project? Uh, obviously I don't need like the I'm in the middle, the right side. I have Brooks builds here, that's fine. I have home here. Um, like my design just doesn't like, I don't, Fully have a, a design for this yet. Um, my big idea is um, I want to I want to be able to navigate. Maybe that's what I should do. I, I might. What I might end up doing is like taking taking a few days off of the stream to like actually create a full design uh, for for this. I've got some like ideas. And I have other things, I just haven't had time to work on it. And I think that might make the most sense. Is just like maybe take a few days off in, in, from streaming, um, which only is like a couple hours, because I only get like what, an hour each, each morning before I have to head off to work and uh, build out a combination like wireframe. I don't know if I want to go into like full mock up territory, maybe like a quarter of the way there. Uh, do some of the uh, the research so I have some like I have some other sites that I want to like look at uh, for inspiration on this uh, and then uh, fully feet uh, fully um, flesh out the um, experience for this what we can work on a little bit today is um, maybe starting to set up some get up actions so something um, we're, we're experimenting with a uh, what is it called? A um, mono repo for this. Uh, it's not like a mono repo for everything in the Brooks Builds ecosystem, but more for like just this platform. So all the things together. So um, deployment, we're gonna want to have happen in GitHub Actions. So I want to set up uh, this be a new folder. Dot. I think it's like dot GitHub. workflows and inside of that we'll have something like um, maybe like main like the, the main workflow possibly okay. 
And these are YAML files. Uh, and then I constantly forget exactly how these work. So let's uh, let's take a look. GitHub flows syntax reference. Um, all right, so the name for okay, so we start with name. Um, name of uh, name of this workflow. I guess this is going to be just sort of like. Um, Works builds uh, main workflow. Um, okay, so on. What are what are the different events that could happen here? And I think we have sort of this style, this style, and then also can I do slash two? No, it looks like they're part of. Um, objects. So they're keys to the objects. Okay, so on. Um, I want this to happen. So run on push and oh, and I could make this an array. So like run on push to all branches. Run on pull request. to all branches. I think I think those are the two big sort of like things that I would want here. Okay, permissions. I don't know if I need to set those up right now. ENV, okay, so we could set up environment variables for all steps. I don't think we need to do that here, probably like in the individual steps. Um, set up defaults, okay, so defaults could be interesting. Uh, let's see, concurrency, don't need that. Okay, so jobs. So I have here we'll have jobs. Right, and inside of each job we have steps. So um all right, well the first big thing is that whenever we do any kind of push, I want um I want my, let's see, and right right now we're working on the platform stuff. So I want to lint the platform and make sure that that's running just fine. So we'll do like lint platform. Name, uh, that's the platform. I think there's like steps. Uh, are you going to put .html.css and other assets in an S3 bucket? Yes, and that's how it's working right now. So I put, I, I do that AWS uh, sync command. It puts the files and folders into an S3 bucket, and then CloudFront is sort of sitting on top of those and uh, pulling those assets and caching them and sending them to whoever requests them. Um, okay, so we have needs in the case we, oh, it needs to like wait for something else. Um, we have an if, uh, but your backend is not distributed. 
No, I don't really have a back end yet. Uh, we've been sort of like, we played around with uh, setting things up with um, EC2. Uh, I think I have an EC2 instance running right now on the free tier. Uh, and it's going to have like a logging system on it and, and pre anything else that we really need there. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's not really distributed yet. Okay, so if this runs on, oh, runs on. Okay, so tell it what it's going to run on, which is going to be Ubuntu. We're just going to do Ubuntu latest. So runs on. Is it, yeah, Ubuntu latest. Um, environment is not the same as environment variables. Environment to define the environment that the job references. All environment protection rules. I don't think I've ever used environments in GitHub Actions. Okay, so if I need any environment variables set up for this, uh, this is where we would do it now. Uh, for linting purposes, I don't think we need any. Okay, defaults for any steps. Again, I don't think I need any right now. And then we have our steps. So, okay. Uh, now. Oh, I'm, I'm actually surprised. They almost always show in their examples, though, the GitHub action, the GitHub one. Close. We have actions. Oroku there, and then that one. Oh, this one is it. Use actions checkout. GitHub actions use actions checkout. Uh, this is maintained and run by GitHub, I believe. Uh, and it is V3 now. Uh, these are all just sort of like um, variables that you can set up. So I want to use this. Uses actions checkout three. Uh, I want to check out the branch that I'm on right now, which should be fine. So that's going to be okay. So. Uses actions checkout v3. Um, and I don't really need to set anything else up. We could give this a name, but I don't think I really need to. So, okay, that checks out our code and CDs into the directory. So that's going to be into the Brooks builds directory. Now for lint the platform, I want like that's gonna be inside of platform and inside of web app in here is where we're gonna run, uh, what is the command? Uh, CD platform web app i think it's like a cargo is a cargo format do i have any like actual problems in here i don't think i do i have no warnings no errors um if i do something like that are you upset Are you going to make all of this go away? Yeah, you're going to make all that go away. Uh, let's see. 
what can I do to trip up the uh, the formatter and like not have it auto auto fix it, but like have it not be super happy with it? Can I add in like a second semi? No, it see it fixes that too. Oh, can I have like an empty block that doesn't do anything? Like, you're not unhappy, though. Um, okay, so... Oh, can I, can I panic right at the beginning? So, you're, okay, you're now in a warning because it's an unreachable statement. Um, I want to do both, like, run the formatter and then run, um... run um, a Clippy. Oh, it's cargo check, I think. That's what I want to do. Cargo check. Uh, is cargo check gonna use Clippy or do I have to run that separately? I think that's separate, right? Okay, so we're gonna do cargo clippy as our checker here, and that's gonna check all this stuff. So that's uh, that's good. And then cargo format, I believe, uh, formats our code and sets that up. Um, I suppose what I could do. Okay, so we have clippy. That's gonna do this. I just want to run cargo clippy here. So we have, um, it's really like check the platform. So we have step, um, then name is um, run clippy. Uh, do what? So we have uses, oh, run. Run is what I want. So run, uh, I want cargo clippy. Uh, let's see, so shell, I think le leaving as the custom, like the default shell should be fine. Um, don't need like with, with args, entry point, env. I don't need to set any of those out yet. Um, where's my environment variable? Oh no, sorry, not environment variables. I want um, working directory. That's what I want, working directory. I think it might be just working dash directory. But it might also be like work dir. Uh, I always get like confused because all the, the different tools that I use, use like different names for them. Set the default shell and working directory. Okay, so it's gonna be working dash directory. And then we can do that uh, on a per step basis here. So working directory is going to be, so starting from Brooks builds, we're gonna go into platform web app. Okay.
Okay, so we're good there. That should run Clippy for us. And then the other thing that I want to run is um, Cargo Format. So run Formatter. I think that's Cargo FMT. And then also working directory. is going to be platform web app. So I think I think that'll run on every single push, lint the platform, make sure make sure that's running sort of as it as expected. Okay. Uh so let's see. We can test this by just pushing this up. And that should work. So we have our GitHub workflows. Um, oh, I should probably remove this panic. That's not necessary. Okay. I did remove login and we sort of fixed our top menu. Um, okay, so this is linting on a push. Let's see how this goes. I'm using the GitHub um, CLI to sort of watch the uh, watch the run through. We could also do this on the uh, the GitHub just website. It is the fun waiting, fun waiting time. Um, I don't think that we're gonna run into any problems. I think this should just work as expected. Uh, it should also probably pass because I'd be getting those errors myself uh, in the case that um, at least like VS Code should show me if like they weren't working properly. Um, all right, well, we can talk about uh, sort of like feature plans for this. So I am, I am sort of playing with the idea of like, not really taking a break, um, more of like taking, taking, uh, like doing less streaming uh, in like the next week or two and actually plan this out properly. Cause I think like part of my, part of my sort of like resistance to working on this and why I've been um, sort of like doing other things instead of, of working on this project here and this project is a blocker for some of my other courses, so it is important for me to like get it done. Is uh, is just like not having a design and plan and all that stuff. So I I might just take some time, uh, like maybe the rest of this week. Um, so like that would be like what Tuesday through Friday, not do stream, but instead to come down here instead of streaming, just like actually draw out this is gonna be things like on a whiteboard things that are not good for stream which is why i keep on not doing them do the design on stream i could do the design on stream now that, that's another thing i could do the design on stream hey it passed okay so this ran clippy it ran the formatter everything was fine and so this was on a push for this one do i have a drawing tablet i you know, I have a Wacom tablet around here somewhere, but I don't remember exactly where it is. Uh, so I could, I could find that and put that up. But yeah, that's a good idea. We could do the drawing. We could just do it. So it probably would be boring for a bunch of people, but that'll be fine. Boring streams are okay. 
Uh, we'll get some, we'll do some design stuff. And I think, uh, because like the other thing is, I don't know if I'm going to need to um, sort of like rewrite, refactor some of my like Pulumi code also, uh, which is like at this top where we have like infrastructure and platform. I've been sort of like thinking about how that should possibly work and like moving things from another project. So I'm not completely sure. I'll have to, we'll have to play around with that too. Um, but I like that. Okay, designing tomorrow. That's what we're that's what we're gonna start working on is design stuff. To not forget that. Um, oh, and I guess I got I got navigating home, and that's technically working. Let's go ahead, and I'm just going to merge this into the main branch. Okay, check out main, get merge, navigating home. And I'll just push this up and that'll be fine. Okay, so all this stuff is taken care of. For you, I do want to Um, add an item into my inbox for every feature you create a future branch um, I'm trying to be like a little bit better about like my my branching for this uh, especially since I can have I can have um, uh, get up action sort of like help out with that too is um, yeah it would be a feature branch then right back into into um, the main the main branch sort of using something called uh, trunk-based development with a little bit of a uh, smattering of branches on the side. Um, it is it is possible to do trunk-based development like literally on the trunk, and especially if it's just me working on it, that's not really a problem at all. Uh, that, that, should, that should work, but because sometimes it takes me multiple days to get through something, I do feel a little bit safer with a, uh, a branch sort of protecting me, especially as backup for, for my code. All right, so for this, I want to um, create design for Brooks builds web app slash platform. Um, yes, I know it's hidden by the filter. Uh, I think that's the only thing in inbox now too, but uh, that's fine. All right, so I will refine that uh, tonight and uh, then tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll start working on that. Uh, I'll also see if I can find my Wacom tablet. If I can't, we'll just use mouse and it will be fun. Um, my thought is we can either use Figma or we can use um, we can use Figma or I can use just a, a, a virtual whiteboard like freehand. Not exactly sure which one I would I'm gonna go with. Um, Figma is fine. Yeah, I have a free account on that one, so I might have to like delete some like a previous project on it. But besides that, yeah, it should be fine. And uh, then maybe this week we'll just focus on um, getting the design out, and then uh, that will free me up on the afternoons to like after work. Maybe I'll just like try do my best to like you know not not burn myself out, which is always always a positive. Um, so, anyways. That's plenty for me to me to think about uh, for the rest of the day, which means after eight, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off a tiny bit early today. So I will not be taking uh, the break from uh, uh, streaming. I will be taking a break from programming on streaming. We'll be back uh, tomorrow morning uh, at 8 a.m. Mountain Time to uh, to work on design stuff. It'll be fun, I'm sure. So with that, Thank you all for uh, hanging out with me today and uh, I'll see you uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.